So in my previous video, I did a review of the Canon 1300D and how I think it's a good enough DSLR camera for anyone who's into content creation, who's a beginner content creator or photographer. And then someone left a comment in that video saying that she also has the Canon 600D, which I mentioned in that video, and how she would like me to do a demo on how I set up my Canon 600D for filming indoors or filming outdoors. So in this video, I'm going to be doing that. Before we delve into the integrity of this video, I would just like to make one thing clear. If you're going to be investing in a DSLR camera, you want to ensure that you do your independent research. At the time that I bought this camera, I bought the camera secondhand by the way, and read up on a lot of cameras. I also read up on the types of lenses that would be good enough for this camera. I read up on the type of memory card. I read up on a lot of things, okay? So that is something you definitely want to do if you are going to be investing in any gadget, period. The second thing that you'd also need to do if you're going to be investing in a DSLR camera, like the Canon 600D, is you have to read up on how to use the camera. So it's not just about having a device, you also want to <laughs> learn the device okay you also want to learn how to use the camera effectively if not um so yeah that being said i'm going to give you guys some of my main selling points of the canon 600d which is what i'm currently using to film of course the number one thing is that it's got a flip screen right there so what this means is that while i'm filming i can look to see that you know the camera is still recording i could also look to see that i'm properly positioned you know in the center to the right or to the left anywhere that i want to sit it makes the job of recording your videos easy because you can see yourself the second selling point of this camera is obviously the microphone jack um just like with the quality of your video you also don't want to compromise on the quality of your sound so i started out using a different type of microphone that was attached to the camera and was far from me but i found that i would have to project for you guys to be able to hear me so i decided to invest in a wireless microphone just so that you guys can hear me clearly and i could place my camera anywhere and the sound would still be top notch another selling point of this camera is the fact that the memory card slot is to the side in fact as I was recording this video, I didn't know that my memory card was full. So unlike my 1300D, which has the memory card underneath, um, with this one, because the memory card slot is on the side, all I had to do was just open it, pull out the memory card and insert another one, and I continued filming. So it just makes life easier for me, I think, if you're using um, a camera that's got all of these functions. So quickly, let's just run through some of the setups that you guys would need to know. For you to be able to achieve good enough quality using the Canon 600D, you want to ensure that your camera is properly exposed. You want to ensure that your ISO, your aperture and your shutter speed are working together to give you the kind of quality that you are looking for. This is called the exposure triangle. The aperture controls the amount of light that passes through your camera lens. The aperture is known for giving you that beautiful blurred background or that bokeh effect when you are filming a video or taking a picture. The shutter controls the amount of time or the duration of time that the shutter in your camera stays open while you are taking your pictures. And of course, the ISO controls the amount of light required by the sensor to give you the exposure that you are going for. So all of these functions need to work together to give you that correct exposure and balance that you need in order for your videos to be of good quality Whew. now that we are done with the technical part guys i'm just gonna go behind the camera and then show you my setup um, that i'm using to film at the moment okay so guys um this button right here i don't know if you can see this one right here is what controls the shutter speed um if you want to control your aperture you're gonna have to press av alongside this button so you press av down and then you rotate the dial. This is what controls your um, aperture. And then of course, the ISO is very clearly written. It says ISO. So this is what controls your ISO. Now we're gonna go on the screen. I'm going to place something on my chair and then use it to kind of set up the camera, okay? Um, as you can see, my footage is properly exposed because the indicator is right in the middle. So that is what you want to achieve. You want to achieve a setup where this indicator is right in the middle. That is what tells you that your footage is properly exposed. This right here, this one, this 80, this is the shutter. So if I'm moving this dial, which I showed you guys previously, this one, you would see that that keeps changing. Can you see? So you can see the lower it is, the brighter the footage becomes. Now this second one right here, this one is the aperture. 
like i said to be able to control that you need to press av press av down and then rotate this right so as you can see it's changing at the moment i'm using my pancake lens so my aperture goes as low as 1.8 so I'm just going to leave it at 2.2, which is decent. And then, of course, the ISO, which is this button right here. Once you push that button, you can see. Um, typically, when I'm filming indoors, I like to leave my ISO at, sorry, 400. Because, you know, I just don't want my footage to be grainy or for my footage to have a lot of noise. So the lower your ISO, say, for instance, 200 or 100, the higher the quality of your footage the higher your iso you guys can see 800 the brighter your footage but the lower the quality i don't know if that makes sense so we're not going to go into the menu settings to see what we've got going on so my movie exposure is set to manual because i like to control what my environment looks like but you could definitely take it up to automatic which you know would be good enough for somebody who hasn't fully mastered um, this camera um, the next thing you want to ensure is that your um, AF mode is set to live so if you move around the camera still focuses on you and keeps you in focus while you are recording so these two functions are pretty much what I touch in the menu settings you're going to be filming indoors guys you already know i have a massive light in front of me and my wall is wide so those are some of the things you need to take into consideration if you're going to be setting up your camera indoors you want to make sure that you have enough light you want to make sure that your background is clean and crisp especially if you're going to be doing a sit down chit chat video now that we are done with the setup indoors we're going to take this outside okay so now guys we are outside oh my goodness there's just something amazing about natural light so because we are outdoors we have all that natural light we have all the advantage of natural light working for us my iso is always set to 100 because like i said natural light is the best type of lighting for filming and when it's set at 100 you can ensure that the quality of your footage is top notch um, of course uh, i like to also play around with the shutter and the aperture depending on what i am going for so if i'm trying to get like that beautiful blurred background and trying to get like the subject or the image to stand out then i obviously set my aperture to the lowest that i can get it so i set it to 1.8 which is what my pancake lens allows me to do so yes guys that's it it's pretty much easy straightforward if you do your independent study and your independent research if you actually master and learn your camera oh it's such an amazing tool is such an amazing device it's such an amazing gadget and even when i was doing my research about whether or not to get this camera i read somewhere that a lot of youtubers when they started out like back in the day like og youtubers those that have really grown in the business started out using this camera and then even some people will still recommend it in 2021 so it's definitely a powerful device that you've got there it's definitely a powerful gadget you want to ensure that you're maximizing the potential of this camera anyways guys i guess that's the end of this video if you enjoyed it please give me a massive thumbs up also like i said if you're stopping here for the very first time connect with me okay make sure you smash that subscribe button also don't forget to follow me on my instagram i'm very active there and i'll be sure to respond to your dms as always it's your girl henrietta and i'll see you in my next video bye guys